Previously on Echo. On board Jara's ship, Div and Pet talked shop about necks. Doc and Jara made friends. Short Rib danced her way into a leadership position, but Jara was not buying it. And because Div mentioned Dr. Teagues, Jara agrees to take the party to Plinius. And we rejoin them now on the Plinius compound. And now, a word from today's sponsor. This show is proudly recorded on Zencaster. When we first started recording our podcast, we had a lot of options. We needed a platform that could record and generate separate tracks and videos with a full suite of professional tools at our disposal. Zencaster does everything for us and it'll do more for you. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code BADDYBARDS and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same experience I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now let's play some fucking d d So the Plinius compound has a decent number of people around, but for the moment, it's just you guys and Jara. Jara waves you all forward and brings you to a set of stairs that leads you to a platform below where y'all entered. Y'all are still in that underground bunker area in the bottom of the Plinius compound. Um, And she continues through, as she walks, she has the familiarity, and she continues through this maze of catwalks and platforms and stairs, leading you in a dizzying line throughout the space. People stop her and wave and speak as she moves through. And some of them give you strange looks, but most of them don't really acknowledge you whatsoever. Um, some do give you like waves and smiles of welcome, but no one bothers you. And you finally make it to a small interior office space filled with desks and people on consoles doing who knows what. There are beeps and chirps all throughout the area. And Zara walks, Jara walks past this area to a more private office in the back. There are only two chairs in front of the desk that she sits behind. But there is a small couch along the side of the wall, so that way everybody has the chance to sit. And when she sits down, she lets out a long sigh of relief. And she looks at the five of you in contemplation. So, you guys, the door has closed behind you. um, And it's you guys, the next prototype, and Jara in her office. What would y'all like to do? I think short rib after like having passed all those like uh, different people and like inevitably waving at all of them, like upon being in like a private area was like, I didn't, I'd never seen a real Glarbeck before. (laughs) That's so cool that y'all have them here. Jara gives you uh, a, a kind of puzzled little smile and she says, I'm glad you approve of our Glarbeck selection. Um, Hopefully that'll make you feel more at home here. Well, I've never seen them, so honestly, it it doesn't, but it is very cool. I've never felt less at home in my life, though. Jara gives a slow nod at that, and she says, well, hopefully that's something we'll be able to remedy in the coming days or so and she looks around um her office and begins to like pull little tablets out of her console um uh pulls out four little tablets and they have well we'll do a quick perception check to see what you guys can see all right that's a dirty 20 from dr bleak So we got a dirty 20, a 16, a 17, 20. Okay. So all of you can see it's a map of the compound, basically. Uh, You see crisscrossing walkways and platforms and little uh, like icons indicating stairs and doorways and and certain areas that you can get to. Um, So what she's pulling out are these tablets Um, And she sort of rests her hands on top of them. And she says, 
I think it's important that we all speak because this is a precarious situation. I'm sure you're aware. And she says, she straightens herself a little and she says, I'm willing to give you shelter here, at least for a while, but there are rules that have to be followed here in order for everyone to stay safe, including you all. And I would hope that you can understand that this place can't be found. And we already have risked enough by bringing the next prototype here and not dropping it off in an asteroid belt somewhere. And she sighs a little heavily and you see her sort of put her hand to her forehead and like push back the skin of her head, like rub the skin of her head. Not too much on asteroid belts now. Jara like blinks at this and says either way the prototype shouldn't be here it's a safety hazard and it leaves us with a target on our back and she looks at the four of you in turn rests her eyes on Pet and Div and the doctor and you, Short Rib. And she says, the first thing that needs doing is the communicators need to be destroyed. There can't be outside communication going in and out of this place. Not unless it's encrypted. And then you'll be providing new communicators then, yes? Jara... (laughs) gives this a bit of thought and says I'm sure you can find something through requisitions if you must have a communicator Um, but the ones that you came here with can't they can't they can't be here I I guess I have a few questions of course Um, so how I mean how does it work here are with with the plenteous compound is it like you, you are head honcho in charge. Is there a council behind you that helps make decisions for the place, or like what exactly? Jara gives a nod at this and says, "I'm the speaker, so I am the one in charge." Yes. Um, obviously, I can't run everything all the time, so there are other people that are in charge of different things in my stead when I'm not here. Mm -hmm. But when I am here, I, I am the final word. Okay. Div just takes out their communicator and crushes it in their hand. Jara relaxes a little when, when she sees this. Um, Pat does the same thing too. Well, not crushes it, but just puts it on the table. Um, Div will also say like, you know, let, after letting the pieces kind of just fall from their hands, I hope you understand that we are taking as big of a risk as trusting you as it is for you to let us in here. So don't think it is just, you know, you putting people at risk. You, you know, we, we are also at risk. And I think through mutual trust and understanding we can walk away from this on a, a, you know, on a better foot than what we came into it with. Jara nods very slowly and she says, it would probably be a good idea for me to understand why you're at risk in order for you to understand why we are. Div, um like hits up pet telepathically and is like so how much are we sharing (laughs) are we sharing the prison break or like and i also like after i after i say that i'm like i tell shorib please let us do the talking like i (laughs) i telepathically text shorib (laughs) like let us let us talk about this we want to be sure that we tell jara what we want to share you know we don't want to show all of our cards at once that's how you have to interview we have cards. Um, yes. <laughs> like not not actual cards, but mm-hmm. you know, pretend cards. 
Okay. Yeah, okay. mental mental cards. Okay. I I just I gotta make sure I can text my mommy. Completely understandable. But, um but that's okay. we'll, we'll get you a phone like right after we leave Jar's office. She said we can pick them up through requisition, so we'll definitely get you a phone so you can text Big Mom. Okay. And then I think Short Rip asks out loud, Can I keep my phone case? Or can I keep my communicator case? And then I turn it around and it's like a it's like a um whatever the space version of Gudetama is, it's like <gasps> the the most frightening, like depressed <laughs> egg. <laughs> It's like vibrant pink, but like a a, a sickly, like frightening pink. That's that's canon. Now we have to come up with a mascot. What is the name of this little character? Jeff, but spelled with like six Y's somewhere. Jeff with (laughs) six Y's somewhere. You used to do Jeff with a Y. Jeff. Oh, there's at least one Y. (laughs) <laughs> um so uh going back to uh what uh I'm going through everyone's name right now. <laughs> uh Divs said, um you saying this in my mind, right? Uh-huh. You you using detect arts? Shit, I can pop a No, I'm just asking how are you talk to me like regularly or detect I have thoughts? telepathy. So Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't really respond to you. No. Nah. Mm, I, uh, I mean, we have our thieves can't. Our pink goo balloon can't. Oh, that is true. We haven't used that in a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, I think... Mm, this is kind of thing because I don't know what uh, uh, Jara is. What I was about to say, like, that would be a crazy way to find some shit out. <laughs> it's like crazy. <laughs> look at, look at, look at Alan. <laughs> oh, I, I can't nothing. say what I want to, I cannot say what I, I want to say, but I'm thinking it's so loud. And I have been on hush mouth, mouth. boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. What did you say to me? Like you were saying to um, what do I think, basically? Yeah, like should we? Like I guess how much should we share? Should we share jailbreak shit, or should we share like up to one point? Can um um Doctor Mosea hear us too? No, I'm just speaking to you tele- telepathically. Hmm. Could I only could just do nods and. <laughs> Um, Pat right now is, hmm, contemplating something himself at this moment with some, mm, <laughs> uh, some rules that he has for himself. Um, mm. I can't, hmm, it's, it's like, I don't know if I, would, I should nod, hmm. Uh, I I think Pet is just going to just uh lean down and look at I, I'm making this I I don't really care if it's obvious <laughs> and just looks from Div and then I also look towards the doc and I kind of like raise my eyebrows at the doc. <laughs> And I'm sorry, what did Jar ask us again, uh, Alex? Uh, Jar said that y'all have to get rid of your communicators. And she asked um, why you all are at risk. So that way, you know, y'all can understand one another as far as the risk goes. Hmm. Um, hmm. With that look at Doc, I think... Div will share like as as little as possible then because I'm I'm curious as to what Doc will say for her own shit. But Div themselves will say um that the they'll say um well you know the doctor that created me worked closely with the cavalry um and other organizations and some of that I think the things that they may be interested in, um, I think they may 
need me to fulfill some of their things that they want to do, but I could just be gassing my own ass up. I don't know, honestly. Um, but I know they don't want me poking around to find the doc, you know, Dr. JT's location. And that poses a risk. And they, they like motion to pet and they're like, where I'm going, pet is going. So, <laughs> and they'll just leave that for pet. They won't, you know, open the door for, you know, for pet to have to say like specifically what it is for them. Um, and they'll just say like, yeah, we, we I mean, come on. I, I'm sure you've heard of us. We're the pink goombalum. We, we, we've caused some trouble in the IOCs, uh, you know, distributions and whatnot. That's a little fun. Just, just, you know, dude's having fun buddy's having fun <laughs> that's all so we're a bit of a thorn in the ioc side and on top of that i'm looking for information on the doc jar gives you kind of a little frown and and she says pink goon balloons i how long have you all been in operation who do you work with We've been in operation for a few years now, and we work with uh, the communities on planet, damn, on planet Estri. Estri. In the different <laughs> districts. Jared nods very slowly at this and says, I'm afraid I, I, I've i not heard of, a, of the pink goon balloons, but if you spend your time being a thorn in the side of the IOC, then we might have something in common there. As for the kid, um, honestly, we just, he, he just. Short rib stops you and is like, I can't, t- I can't tell you why I'm here, but just know it's a, it's a good, it's a good reason. It's a good and real reason that I d- do have if, if has, check. I want to help with the deception check. <laughs> <laughs> they're, nodding, they're nodding and they're just looking real like, mm-hmm. it's true. Sure, it's something like a secret ass mission. We don't even know the full details of it. We just know that it is of the utmost importance. I mean, the deception check itself will just be straight because Jara already doesn't believe y'all. Like, doesn't believe y'all. So it'll just be straight. Damn, let's see. The the pet did not pet. Uh, Div did help, which canceled the disadvantage. A a whopping twelve, but like a very enthusiastic twelve. Okay, <laughs> the kind so of twelve that's just, like watery eyed and excited. I watery eyed twelve. What the fuck? Um, so Jara is extremely insightful. Extremely so. Let me explain why this is funny to me. You rolled a 12, right? Mm-hmm. Jara adds a plus 10 to insight. Plus 10 to insight. Jesus. You want to know what I I'm rolled? telling you. That's insane. I rolled a three. <laughs> Period. But I got a Kiss 13. Kiss my grits. Kiss my fucking grits. It's a 13. I still beat you. <laughs> you think... Well, I sure of is sure of is like sweating <laughs> through, <laughs> through his little feathers. Jara looks down at you, short rib, and I hate that. <laughs> then, like, you can see her, like, you can see the wheels turning in her mm-hmm. head, mm-hmm. and she says, I would like to believe that the Confederation isn't turning children into spies, but I've heard of much worse things happening. So I'm afraid that that might not be good enough. I need I need further reassurances. Otherwise, either you can separate on your own or you can all go. But I can't risk the safety of the people here the people who trust me to take care of them over nebulous reasons, even from a child. I'm sorry that I have to be strict, but I have to be. I think Pat is weighing options right now and Mm -hmm. seeing that (laughs) short rib kind of fucked that up. (laughs) 
and they still need a uh, reassurance. Um, Pet um, looks at Jar and asks, "You said you had a network." Jar nods and says, "Yes, whatever." I <laughs> Pet like looks at Jar seriously. <laughs> This is the first time I think Pet is just looking, like, staring, like, very intensely at Jara. And mm-hmm. um, says in Pink Goon Balloon Can't Two Div, I'm going to handle it. And says, do you know Oku um, Azon? No, I know you know them. But are they here? Oku Azon. Mm-hmm. You want a high number. I know. <laughs> Jara. Give me an insight check, Pat. All right. 23. 23? Good. Jara, her expression is very stoic. She doesn't give much away. But you, Pet, are very used to the resting neutral face because it's something that you do yourself. So you are very in tune with how people hide emotions. And you know that the face has the ability to lie, but the eyes do not. They can't. So you... Jara doesn't answer right away when you mention the name Oku Azon. But you see her eyes flash in recognition at that name. And she says, you want to know if someone named Oku Azon is here. She shakes her head and says, I don't know. I have to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And she chuckles a little and she says, this is terrifying for me. You four and this prototype are the first beings to come here in a, from a channel outside of my own in quite a few years. This place is extremely well protected on purpose. And you yourself have not been very forthcoming with any information whatsoever. Along with the fact that there is a young one here who is still an unknown quantity. I would be lying if I said it was easy to trust you. The same can be said for you. That's fair. I think, but Pat, you'll understand why I can't tell you whether or not this person is here until I know for a fact that you are not here to cause harm. I'm sorry. What's the purpose of the uh, cavalry? Frankly, if we wanted to, we would have left you to die. I think Pat is going to. I think Pat like sees this because they know. <laughs> it's like they know. They know. <laughs> yeah, Pat. Um, we'll say finally, and he's like, he has not said this in forever. He says, Mm -hmm. do you want information that can provide at least a safety net for everyone here? Jara leans forward when you say this. And her expression is very careful. But she nods once very slowly and says, I would appreciate that. When he says this, it really kind of sounds like he hasn't practiced this in a while. Um, Mm -hmm. The secret that he has been holding on for this whole entire 20 years. (laughs) He says, I'm Pedagel Prez Deku, a survivor of the new ambition. I'm here to reply to Oku's letter. Oku knows me. Give me <clears throat> give me an insight check one more time, Pat. Alright. 
It's just 11. 11? Mm -hmm. If the DC was only a 10, because Jara is not trying to hide this, Jara says, Azon knows you. Huh. And she stands and you see she she like laces her hands together and she begins to move toward you and she says I'll level with you Oku isn't here but I know where she is I think this is gonna be the first the first time Pet actually looks not blank face but also mm-hmm. kind of just relieved <laughs> mm-hmm. And I think Pat um, for you ad is going to say Oku knows me because I am her child. So y'all's reactions are cracking me up. I'm sorry. Um okay. So Jara you see that her, the stoicism in her face breaks. And she says, Oku's child? I was sure of it. You said you're a survivor of the new ambition, didn't you? So you knew ambition, right? Yes. His voice kind of cracks a little bit um, on this because... He has not heard that name or like someone knows that name in a while because that's literally his like it's like you know when somebody finally acknowledge something of a place that doesn't exist no more Mm -hmm. and make it into a reality that's what Pat (laughs) is um, just like this nodding and kind of relief to say this. Mm-hmm. And Pet adds, would this be enough? For the first time, Pet, Jara actually smiles at you. And Pet smiles she, back. <laughs> she laces her fingers more tightly together and she says yes. It's so nice to finally find our people. The survivors of the new ambition have been funneling through here through our network in droves for 20 years at this point. It's it's a miracle that we didn't find you sooner. I know this is a little ridiculous to ask, but are you okay? Pet. (laughs) This Uh, is like staring at Pet, wide-eyed. (laughs) <laughs> what? Like, are you okay? Pat the shakes his head. No. I'm not okay. Jara's Jara's smile falls a little at that. Cause it I think that's the only way that's the only way he could really say it, because it's It's true. He doesn't He doesn't have words for it. Like this moment is like a homecoming. And what do you say to someone that <laughs> I know it's like you okay, but what do you say about when your home is destroyed? No, I'm not okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't been okay for 20 years. Do you say any of this to Jara or do you just say no? I think he says I haven't been okay for 20 years. And this is the most... <laughs> emotion that Pat is displaying because he really wants to retreat back but this moment of being recognized and understanding that someone else knows is just bringing feelings that he don't want to talk or not talk about but like feel in the room of people (laughs) because like right now he's trying to focus on you but he knows that there's other people here and there's going to be a lot of questions afterwards. <laughs> yeah. And he'll know if he's ready for that just yet. But he, he says that. Jara nods at this and she says, 
I'm sorry that I I couldn't trust you before. And she looks down at you, short rib, and says to you, pet, and I'm assuming the young one is in your care, or at least in the care of yourself and your party. My name's short rib. Ragu. It's good to know that, short rib. You did tell me your name is short rib. Okay. Could you stop calling me the young one? Because... I'm a, I'm a big guy. I'm a pretty big guy. My mommy says I'm pretty big, so, you know. And I helped. I stole a lot of money for these guys, so, you know. Jara smiles and not and nods. And <laughs> nods. That is correct. Yeah. Yep, she nods. nods. Absolutely co-signing this. <laughs> and she sticks out a hand for you to shake short rib. And she says, that's fair. Short rib. Stop making that face. Short rib. (laughs) Looks down at their hand and shakes it. Wanting to be an adult in this moment. You want a high number. Uh Uh-huh. She, like, her hand is big. Mm -hmm. She's a big woman. Mm -hmm. Um, and her big hand swallows one of your little hands, your Mm -hmm. little wing. And she, she stiffens for just a moment, just pauses really quickly. And you see the question before she thinks better of it. Yeah, I was gonna say short rib, short rib immediately, um, like telepathically, like communicates with her, um, like... I'm safe. Don't worry. Jara, like her eyebrows raise and she smiles and she says, you're right. You're not just some kid. And she like, you can see, I'll give you this without the insight. You can see that the, the last of her reservations sort of fall at that. And she says, it would be an honor to welcome all of you to Plinius. And she walks around the back of her desk and scoops up those tablets again, and she hands one of them to each of you. And she explains really quickly, like, this is a map of the compound, shows you how it works. How it works is basically, like, it's Google Maps. Like, and it has, like, you are here, like a little icon or whatever that shows where you are, um, shows you, like, a 3D rendering. You can get a full tilt um, lay of the land through the through this map. And she shows you how it works and shows you where everything is. And finally, she says, all of the communicators do have to be destroyed but we can absolutely get you replacements, encrypted replacements in requisitions. Um, Pat's like, yes, I know the protocol. Jara smiles and says, I know you do. (sighs) What a relief. And she says, this has been a hell of a way to meet new friends. And I'm sorry that it started so explosively, but... I think that we could really use your expertise, especially seeing as you are the child of Oku Azon, the Oku Azon. I haven't heard that name in so long, and to hear it from you now is just staggering. And she begins to walk forward, um, heading out of the office or heading towards the door of the office, and she says... I'll take you all to requisitions. I'll destroy the communicators on, you can leave them on my desk. And she says, I need to introduce you to everyone. It's important that you know you have community. Finally. Shorib fumbles with the phone case a little bit. It's like, okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a sleight of hand check with advantage. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> a 12. Okay. Yeah, that's plenty. That's plenty. You were able to uh, slide the little, the cute little case with the cute little Jeff with a Y case off your communicator. Many <laughs> with many Ys. 
<laughs> Jeff with many wise K's. Um, you're able to pull it off of your communicator and uh, pocket it and bring it with you. Cool. It jingles a little bit. Sure, it's like hell yeah, and could fly, but like kind of like toddles behind y'all. <laughs> So as Jara leads you down the catwalks, you can see on the maps that you're heading to an area named Requisitions. Um, And it's on the other side of the compound. It's down a couple of flights of stairs up to the left, up a different set of stairs to the... It's a very confusing and labyrinthine place. And Jara explains as you continue, she says, we made this this way on purpose. It's to confuse in case we are infiltrated. We doubt very seriously that'll happen, but just in case, we need to be able to scramble and get the hell out of Dodge quickly. So you'll eventually get the lay of the land and I promise it'll make more sense as you get used to the place. So she leads you through these different corridors and you see people, now that they see her like more relaxed you see more people are approaching y'all and introducing themselves and the like um hey boo hey um and just introducing themselves and the like and she makes it to requisitions with you all and she walks up to like into one of the doors jara leads you into the door of a place called requisitions and inside you see a Rhaegar woman um and you also see a small like green fluffy creature that has a trunk and is very round and flat at the same time so it's like a squishmallow come to life um, and it has a little trunk and it shoots when it sees Jara and yes. runs and like like disappears between her legs and like weaves around her like a cat and wide ass sock saucer eyes right now mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. Div and Shorab are absolutely looking the same like cute mm-hmm. fluffy I need to touch this thing Yes, <laughs> I need to pet it with, with trunk <laughs> Can I turn into this thing? Like, I have questions. (laughs) She she sees your interest and she uh, picks up the animal and, like, walks towards y'all with it. And she, like, cradles it in her arms and says, you can touch her if you'd like. Her name is Tundra. She's a floofant. And Jara, like, rubs her, (laughs) rubs the floofant's belly and you hear the floofant like purr through its trunk, which is a hell of a sound. Um, <laughs> yes. We need floofant merch now. Yes. <laughs> so Tundra is the little mossy green floofant and it has like green fur that actually is bioluminescent like it glows and it has big round doe eyes and like little tusks in its lip and it's this itty bitty little small trunk and it trumpets out little toots and it purrs and it vibrates when it's happy and you see it's vibrating like at the at the frequency of the sun right now it's very pleased especially with getting like scritches and such and the Rhaegar woman this Rhaegar woman looks up from behind her desk and you see her her cephalopod-esque head sort of like undulating in the air Um, And you see little tentacles that actually look like dreads, um, like little tentacles that look like dreads coming down her back. Um, And she's got like blue skin and it changes color. So it's always like she's undulating between pink, blue and purple. Um, And she's got really big, dark black eyes, like look like they would suck in light. and she has like a gun at her hip and a crossbow at her back 
and you see her typing away on uh, um, like one of the tablets on her screen. And she looks up when you guys come in and she says, ugh, finally, where the hell have you been, Jara? And Jara looks at this woman, this Rhaegar woman and says, Void, good to see you. Uh, The summit, I was at the summit. And Void goes, oh, right. Well, glad you survived. Good to see you back. You said more than twenty million. <laughs> Shout out to the for, uh, to you for not dying. <laughs> Work. Yeah, that's right. about it. Um, Did you say void, and, Alex? Void. Yeah. Okay. And void looks at the four of you in turn and says, "Hi, I see that you've met Tundra." Tundra's always excited at new company. I'm Void. Good to meet you. Hi, Void. I like your head and body colors. Those are really cool. Void gives you a very wide smile at this, and she goes, thank you. I like them, too. (laughs) Sure, I was just having a great day. (laughs) He met Tundra, meeting all sorts of cool people. Charles see... most excellent day. <laughs> not, also not being, you know, shot into space after thinking that you're a spy, but you Extremely know, they... good things <laughs> happening all around. Yes. <laughs> Very auspicious day for, for our little baby short rib, yeah. <laughs> and you guys, you see that Jara sort of uh gives gives void a nod and says oh yes these are our new recruits um survivors of the new ambition and company and she says we're going to need communicators for them and we're going to need we're going to need cards um and she looks over at you guys and and begins to explain um, all of your Chromio transactions, all of them are traceable in the IOC. So we don't use Chromio anything here. We use Binti coin here. And she says Binti is our, is a digital currency. Um, not too different from credits, just not accredited by the IOC. We just telepathy and it's like fuck, so we're broke again. <laughs> but they're nodding along, like uh huh, okay, Benty. Jara, Jara gets sees sees a little <laughs> bit of like disappointment cross your your face. <laughs> I think and, uh, Pat is like, that's why I was spending my money. Where <laughs> I should have, oh, fuck, I should have balled out. <laughs> you should have balled out. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I think uh, that's why Pat was uh, doing because I knew this money is temporary, bitch. <laughs> I think like Div, I think Div was thinking of like taking it back to the district and fucking Robin Hood style, just throwing that shit. Because truly, what do they need the money for? Like <laughs> drugs, maybe the occasional drug. <laughs> uh, I was not uh, <laughs> holding over for this money, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Okay. And you see that like Jara is like privy to the fact that there is a conversation happening that she can't hear. Um, but she doesn't interrupt and she doesn't press. And she says, I know that it's going to be a little rough living here for however long you need to, but our home is your home. And we provide for our people here so you don't have to worry about food or clothing or shelter or weapons or any of that we have it in we have it in droves and she looks over at you pet and she says it's largely due to oku that we have as many weapons as we do so i would be an absolute idiot to keep you away from them so please And she looks over at Void and says, can you outfit our new friends here? And Void goes, of 
course I can. And she stands, uh, Void stands up and you see the floofant like falls down on, onto its feet and like trumpets after her as she like walks into a closet, um, like a long glass closet at the very back. And you see racks upon racks upon racks of guns, crossbows, long bows, short bows, force guns, anything you want, they've got it. They've got it. Um, and she comes back with a couple of different, like, little packages in her arms. She's got four arms. And she's got little boxes and bags for each of you. And she brings forward, uh, like, a uniform situation. Um, like, clothing that you guys can change in and out of, should you, like, be of a mind to. Um, she brings forth a binti, like a binti card, um, and like jailbroken communicators. And she, she hands a package to each of you and says, this should be a good enough little starter kit, but if you need anything else, I'm always here. Thank you. Well, not always. I do have to eat. <laughs> But thank you for all this. This is uh, wow. really Boyd helpful. Is, Boyd is being really go for the material right now, you know. <laughs> no <cap. laughs> Listen, incredibly wifey coded. I wouldn't. I wasn't gonna say. I wasn't gonna say anything. I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> Doc sweating in the corner. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's been dead silence since like we've been in the room. Like Doc's just been like observing. I everything. was just gonna say like I I think Div is actually curious as like to vibe check. Um, is like does want to vibe check Doc because Doc has been unusually quiet and you know the shit about Pet was surprising but not too surprising for Div because they already knew about like they already knew that shit came from the new ambition and that was destroyed. But how how far that went that they they didn't know. So learning that their parent is here is definitely like a surprise, but they're not going to obviously like hash it out in front of company. You know what I'm saying? So of course. they're like, that's for later. And pet, like I fucking know pet. Why is like doc is so quiet. And I guess what's on their mind is now is that like, there is nothing to attach short rib or doc to them. Like if mm-hmm. doc and short rib wanted to, they could just split and they could be fine and go wherever they wanted. So, mm-hmm. What what is Doc in it for? Why stay? I probably can't get Doc from a look from a vibe check, but you know, I I, I definitely want to kind of like peek out the corner of my eye like a Doc. Well, let's let's do it. Let's let's call it an insight check. Um, and Doctor Bleak, you can roll either deception or persuasion depending on how much you want to reveal, and we'll go based off of that. Let's go PVP, baby. Wake it up. You got a 22. What'd you get, Dr. Bleak? I got 39. a 29. <laughs> you got a 29? <laughs> Fucking close! <laughs> you got a what did you roll? I got a 19 plus 10. <laughs> <laughs> so that means if you crit, you get a 30? Yeah. Jesus. Doc can't fight. Doc can't fight. She just lies. Love she just lies. Real life gift of gab, babe. Real life gift of gab. Life gift of gab. So in this moment, Dr. Bleak, with everything that has just transpired, I am curious, what's going on in your mind right now? What's going on in Doc's mind is probably exactly what's going on in Div's mind. Which is, now that we've, like, dropped off, Pet and Div don't have any reason to stick with Doc and Short Rib at all. Mm -hmm. So if they wanted to, they could just dip. Also, this whole Calvary thing, Mosea is not quite sold on it just yet. Mosea has got to see a few more things before Mosea puts any more cards into this. So I think Mosea is just being real quiet, holding cards real close to the chest in another new environment that's fair and you see jara notice this jara is very observant and has been watching all of you very closely since before y'all got on her ship to be honest um so she notices but she doesn't press 
And she says, I'm sure that after everything today, a nice home cooked meal wouldn't go amiss. Should we go? Shall we go eat? I can show you your quarters on the way. Shorub's out. <laughs> Shorub's at the door. <laughs> Jara sees you sort of like totter your way forward and she she gives a wide smile at this and says yes let's go and feed our friend short rib here I think um, Pat just says thanks (laughs) like to um, Void like does a nod thanks Void be back later Void gives you a little wave and goes back to playing with the floofant so this is the girlfriend experience, huh? <laughs> so this is love. <laughs> so this. Sorry, literally that's all I can say. Damn. Can't even serenade proper no more. Okay. But yes, yeah, subscribe to the Kofi. <laughs> yeah. So Jara does walk uh, walk you forward, short rib. And she says, as you guys are walking forward, she says, so you are someone that I've never come across before, short rib. And I'm very curious. I be grounded a lot. Hmm? You, you, Jara, like full tilt, like laughs at that, like trumpet up her little, her little trunk is up and she like full tilt, like giggles at that, you know, and she says being grounded can definitely stop your adventures. They definitely used to stop mine. (laughs) I fully (laughs) understand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I get out though. It's fine. I'm, I mean, I'm here. My mommy knows I'm here, though. But yeah, it. You know, yeah. Oh, you mm-hmm. should text Big Ma to go ahead and give her your new <clears throat> number. Short rib. Oh, I should. I should. I should. Um, I assume you pet. Uh, no, not I assume. Um, are you telling me this or is uh? Div says Div that. telling. Okay. Yeah. yeah Div uh, says that out loud. Yeah, okay. Uh, absolutely. Short was like, oh, right, 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 right. And um, pulls out the uh, communicator and is like, <laughs> roll to see. No, short would. I'm going to roll to see. Yeah, you would remember. Short River remembers. We, yeah. we had you um, roll before. You remember the number. Sure. Okay, yep. Okay, so I text um, and I go, bird emoji, eye emoji. Um, hi, new phone. <laughs> I kept the case. Don't worry. So you do get a response. And as usual, it is a hologram. And Big Ma says, Big Ma says, new phone, huh? <laughs> well, that'll do just fine. Are you staying safe? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm and I'm eating and I'm making friends, and um, I'm having a lot of fun, and and I think short rib stops and um, looks at uh, Div and is like, or not Div, but um, I'm sorry. Um, this is it's it's not Jara that I'm with. Yes, it is Jara that I'm with. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. I look at Jara and I'm like, can can I tell my mommy where I am? Jara thinks on this for a moment and says... Because I should. She says, I gotta. She says, you can tell her what planet you're near. This... And you guys are right next to a planet. You see on the um, on the on the board, the planet that you guys are looking at is the one that you're right next to. Y'all are near Tihu in the Karina sector. So when Jara says, tell which planet you're near, she says, you can tell your mother or your mom that you're near Tihu. And if it becomes more relevant for her to know exact locations, then yes. But for the moment, I I would really rather people not know that Plinius existed. I think, I think Short Rib thinks about that for a second and is like, 
I don't think... I think Short Rib is concerned that his mom won't like that because I'm trying to think like a, a child wouldn't know how to articulate it, but I think Short would be upset yeah. that like their mother would not like them being like, I can't tell you exactly where I am. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, so I think Short gets like nervous, but is like a big a big dude and is like, oh, okay. And um, so goes, I'm on, I'm on a secret mission. I can't tell you exactly where I am for reasons soon to be told and like a five wink emojis and um and a heart and but I'm safe and I'm safe twice send another love you I love you so much and three kisses um and then another bird and an eye emoji and send. So you get a response back and Big Ma says, sends another hologram and says, hmm, well, when do you think you'll be coming home? As soon, as soon as I can. Give me an insight check real quick. Yeah. Because I don't think short rib is like good at being like, oh, yeah, I I know how to lie to my mom. <laughs> I know how right. to lie to my mother. <laughs> and like does want to come home, but is like aware that like can feel that there are stakes. Is it like fully like, oh, you know, like I know the stakes, but it's like. It is very tense in here, and I had to break my phone upon entry. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, a ten. Okay, good. The DC was only a ten. You get a response back from Big Ma, and it's a hologram again. And the holograms are are relatively like blue, mm-hmm. just in hue. Like they all tend to be that color, mm-hmm. but you know that Big Ma is translucent. She can be seen through. Hmm. and that she flashes colors so when you say you can't tell her even in the hologram she's not able to hide it immediately because she responded immediately so you see like a flash of yellow at the very beginning of the message before it all melts down and Big Ma says I'd like you to keep in contact with me if you can darling and stay as safe as you can. Are you still with that hippo? <laughs> yes. And I think, I think he likes somebody. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, are we, have I seen this conversation happen? <laughs> I'm, texting. Uh, I'm texting. No, because you, um, you're doing a, uh, what's it called? You're texting, hologram. but Big Ma has holograms coming back. Mm-hmm. So you hear, like, you hear the responses. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm playing it so loud because I'm a baby. Yeah, it's it's up. It's it's on speaker as fuck. <laughs> um, <laughs> Pat's going to say. Extremely on speaker. I think Pat's going to say, you can also give um, Big Ma my phone number to you. I'll keep eye on you. Okay. Um, and then is like, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you Pat's phone number. Um, his name is Pat, by the way, and tries to spell the full name as <laughs> they heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Does not ask you how it's spelled is very confident. Like, no, you said it. You said your name extremely confidently. And I got this. So, <laughs> yes. And then it's like, what's your number, Pat? You know how you do this? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, do the, like. This? Not, like, you know how you could transmit um, numbers? I think that's what I do. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. easier. Okay. Okay. So you send this off to Big Ma, yes? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. So Big Ma does send back a reply and she flashes pink again and says, 
Well, I deeply appreciate that, darling. It'll be nice to know who's keeping tabs over my baby. And she says, I gotta go. Be careful now. Okay, mommy. And- I'm not a baby, but I, and I love you. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a big man, but I love you so much. <laughs> big Ma does not reply beyond that. Wow. Um, and it's as you guys, that was the last message before you guys made it into the cafeteria. Um, and this place is huge. Um, you guys had to walk down a couple of flights of stairs. It's at the bottom of the compound. And you see different offshoots like doors and corridors leading this way and that and people buzzing all throughout this space. Um, and there's a big screen on the far right side of the of the of the room and directly in front of you is like a cafeteria table where people are like serving themselves and getting food and you see like cooks in the back that are cooking um and there are tables laid out with people of all colors sizes shapes creeds like builds everything everybody is here and um you guys are holding your materials and and Jara says, now, just through that far right door, that's where the bunks are. And we'll get you a room as soon as we get some food in our stomachs. And she walks forward to the calf and, like, starts talking to the one of the cooks back there. And, like, just, you know, general pleasantry, shooting the shit and, like, scooping up food for herself. Um... And you guys are able to follow suit. And she takes a seat at one of the tables and seems to be waiting for y'all. Real quick, can I circle back to that vibe check I rolled on um, Doc? Oh, yes. I got a, I got a 29 on deception. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> All right. That 22 was good. It was very good. I was hoping I like, you, for you. You all right. You all right. You Don't right, worry about girl. it, baby. Don't worry, Don't about, worry it. about it, big dog. You got it. You can <laughs> ask. Hey, you I good? Oh, you good? Months. We have <laughs> Well, true. you guys are separated right now. Like, j- not not separated from each other, but you guys are like by yourselves at the front of this calf. Um, nobody's around you, and the place is so filled with noise that nobody's going to hear you if you have your own conversation. Um, so if you are interested in asking, you do have the cover of hundreds of people. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's a mouse could tool Div will save for later. Wait, wait. <laughs> I think, um... <laughs> Precisely. I'm gonna keep that in the chamber. Um, we're gonna go to the <laughs> chamber? <laughs> hey, now. I said, I'm going to keep that in the chamber. (laughs) Oh, God. Um, I don't think Peck gets food. Um, Mm -hmm. In this moment of time, they are still kind of like shocked that they said something. Mm -hmm. But they're, you know, putting on a good face uh, for it. You know, they're back to their train, back into their um, neutral face because there's something else that they have to... Uh, part two is talking to Oku, so that's going to be interesting. And it's like he's thinking about, oh, shit, he's here. I mean, um, she's here. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, but um, wait, is she here? I don't know. You Isn't she know not here? She was like, her. okay. Yeah. She was like, she's and not here, but I know where a... she is. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought she said, too. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna I, have I to guess Dev looks to the group. And they're like, well, who's hungry? Um, Pat just says to um, Div, wait, can you eat? No, you can't eat. <laughs> you said who's hungry? <laughs> I, I have to have the, uh, the, the chips uh, section or whatever, you know, the microwave. They do have choose. some data chips that register as tastes and sensations for y'all. Cause you're you're not the you're not the only auto gnome here, so of course they have things that you know fit your you're diet. for pleasure, well. you know what I mean. But yeah. I don't need the <laughs> euphoria, the euphoria yes. of it. Yeah, <laughs> basically um, attempts to grab a tray. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think while if y'all are going to get food, I think Pet's gonna walk to Jara with no food or nothing. Mm-hmm. Jara sees you. And she like waves you forward and gives you a, a kind smile. 
Um, and she says, nothing to your tastes? Not hungry? Truthfully, I'm not. Pet looks at Jar. I need to know how to contact Oku. Is that possible? Jar nods and says, yes. I reach out to her when we have special orders and she normally delivers within a couple of weeks. Um, I did recently just send out an order. So more than likely she'll be coming here in the next day or two. Would that be enough <gasps> time or do you want to connect to her more directly? Man, um, kind of, Pet's kind of like not trying to show like, uh, damn, he has a few days. <laughs> And give me a deception check. <laughs> okay, let me see what I get. Okay. 14. So Jara seems to glean that you are struggling, but it doesn't seem as though she understands with what necessarily. And she doesn't press. She's very good at minding her business. And she good. says, <laughs> we she all says, <laughs> Well, if if you'd like to get in contact with her more directly, I'm sure I can send out a message for you. But if you want some time, then when she comes, I can introduce the two of you again and leave you to it. Pet kind of like goes in between the, the choices. Pet doesn't know what he wants to say or... Is it better to say, I think he, he likes it being in present. He's just going to say, you said a few days. Yeah. Um, is there a way you could send a message? I know she does take a while for things and responses. (laughs) She's known for that. Uh, yeah, I know. So um, it kind of sounds really bitter <laughs> yeah. when he's uh, when he says that. Um, uh, Pet says if you could send a message, but also in a few days I would like to talk with her. Of course. What would you like the message to say? Oh, like I said before, I'm I'm here to. I'm here to return the message from the letter. That will cover it. Okay. Jara nods and says, Roger that. And you see her, like, her trunk, like, she begins to eat some of her salad. Mm -hmm. Um, And as she's (laughs) chewing, um, she... (laughs) She's a loxodon. Hello? I... I (laughs) Oh, and I'm a I'm a hippo with, uh, but it's just like you know when you you know when you are not eating, you watch if somebody eat. <laughs> Maybe. And it's like while you eating, I was like, with Jar, I was like, it's um, can I just go back there to the barracks? I said barracks, but the rooms. Oh, Jar says, of course. I don't want to keep you. Okay, and I think. Uh, do you just are you gonna tell the number? What number? Oh, uh, what room number it is. Oh, yeah. She put all of that in y'all's uh, little tablets. Y'all are in room 304. Okay. Um, Together? Pet like, pet nods. It's different. Like, it's of uh, sweets. Oh. Well, you wouldn't know that, but I, they are. I, I, it doesn't make me do it because I'm... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, but, so. Pet just, like, nods and say thank you. This means a lot and just walks to the barracks. And this passage, y'all, this passage, y'all. <laughs> As you are heading to the barracks, actually, y'all hear the big screen to the right come on. And it's a broadcast, um, an emergency broadcast. And the news broadcast says that it's because it, it is. It's a news broadcast, and it says the the person is saying that Jar ruthlessly attacked 
a malfunctioning prototype from the Confederation, then stole it. And that she had accomplices working with the, with the leaders of the IOC who helped her steal the prototype and that the Confederation is asking the IOC to take this as a declaration of war. And then all four of your pictures along with Jara's are flashed on the TV or like on the screen. And at the very top, it says wanted for questioning. And you see Jara stops eating. Like you see her trunk, like she's got a handful of salad and it's right to her mouth. And then she goes, not this shit again. And that's actually where we're going to leave it for today. Masterful. Oh my fucking God. (laughs) (laughs) These niggas just won't fucking let up. Not dead. Questioning, not dead. <laughs> Questioning. Just yeah. questions. Never Just been convicted. Questions. <laughs> never, <laughs> never been convicted. <laughs> Mosaic I'm never been convicted. Zero convictions, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's Satine. If you enjoyed this episode, give us our roses by rating us five stars and writing a lovely review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Want more Baddie Bars? Our social media details are in the description below. And remember, we are here. Bye!